Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Tonight we have a late night insight on an Arabian Oud fragrance. It's my third Arabian Oud review on the channel. And um, all of them have basically come off of samples people have sent to me because it's not a brand that I really uh, know or um, care enough about to buy full bottles. Let's say I was given a free full bottle from my good friend Hari uh, of one of the sweeter Arabian Ouds. So that'll probably get a butchering one of these days. But uh, this is one of the more expensive Oud fragrances in the line. And it's called Diwan Al Shark. Diwan Al Shark. So, um... Diwan Al Shark, 100 mils, $425. Now, the other two I've reviewed on the channel, Blue Oud, which is by far my favorite Arabian Oud fragrance, Blue Oud. Um, it's nothing like a blue fragrance, if that worries you. Don't worry about that at all. It's the most animalic of the Arabian Oud fragrances I've smelled. Uh, and also, I have reviewed Royal Oud. So Arabian Oud has their version of a Royal Oud. There's a lot of Royal Ouds out there. Creed has a Royal Oud. Um, I think Armani has a Royal Oud, and, and that Royal Oud uh, by Arabian Oud comes out in a set with an oil that comes with it, and it sells for $1,500. So um, many of the reviews you see on these very high-priced fragrances, um, they're just people gushing all over them, talking about how amazing they are, and honestly, Royal Oud was a nice fragrance, but I didn't think it was anywhere near $1,500. I thought it was more like a $100 fragrance, personally. Um, in fact, even with uh, Diwan Al Shark, we're going to talk about today, $425, um, I just don't see it. I, I, I keep, I've worn this three times now, um, and so thank you to uh, my good friend. Um, who sent me these? I forget who sent these to me. I'm sorry. Whoever sent me this sample, I very much appreciate it. Uh, it just kind of gets thrown up there with everything else, and then eventually I end up grabbing it grabbing it, and, and doing a video on it. But um, today was quite the day, I'll tell you that right now. I wish I could share some of the stuff that's gone on today. But um, today was one of those days um, where you just want to relax. It's raining outside, I had to take my car to the shop, um, and of course they didn't have what I needed. And it's just one of those days nothing has gone, gone well. Um, and it's gloomy outside and all that stuff, and you and I'm like, you know what? I need some some relaxation, and what better relaxation at night for a frag head than to put on oud, right? So I've been putting this on actually for the last three nights. I've worn it to bed, and I've worn it to bed three nights in a row because I keep wanting it to show me something. Like, why are you four hundred and twenty five dollars? Speak to me. It doesn't speak to me. This this type of perfumery does not speak to me. Um, and, and I'll tell you, uh, one of the main reasons is for people who maybe don't like ha have, for, let me start again, for people who don't have that uh, disease that me and Russian Adam have where we always want more real musk, more real oud, more real ambergris, more real castorium, all that good stuff, right? If you like your fragrances to be super mellow, super smooth, super sort of um, without any big transitions, without major surprises, without major complexity. If you like simplicity and you buy into Arabian Oud using high quality in ingredients, which they say they do, I'm not sold on that fact personally, but if you buy into the fact they use the highest quality materials, then you'll probably like this type of perfumery. For me, this kind of starts off very soft, right? Almost to the point where when I spray, I'm like, did I actually like hit my wrist? Did I miss or something? Because uh, it opens up extremely soft. Now, on the same token, it opens up very velvety smooth, okay? Imagine looking at like a body of water with almost no waves. It just has this smooth, um, you know, very monotone uh, delivery, okay? Is really what it feels like. And that's why I say I'm almost checking like, man, did I spray the right spot? But you can smell it. Um, and it starts off extremely smooth. Just very calm for an oud fragrance. Calm waters, okay? These are not troubled waters. These are very calm waters. And um, uh, all the dirty, raunchy sort of fertilizer chips, the fecalness, the animalic heaviness, even the smokiness that you have come to expect from oud is all removed from this. Um, this is a very soft. Uh, now, later on, I will say, as the fragrance continues to dry, I've got a two-hour dry down here. 
as the fragrance continues to dry, some of those smoky notes and uh, maybe a little bit more of the oodiness begins to, I feel like, roar back to life a little bit. Like it starts off very subdued, like just dead asleep, you know? You're poking it with a stick trying to wake it up. And it's just extremely soft to me, to my nose. Um, I'll read you the blurb. They don't use the word soft. They use the word regal. Um, but, uh, but yes, to me, it starts off very, very, very soft. And then as it dries on your skin, some of those smokier elements, some of those suede elements, um, some of those woodier elements that really begin to sort of growl back to life a little bit. But in the beginning, it's a lot of smooth musks and ambers and maybe just a little bit of amber. I think mostly musk and oud to my, to my nose. Now, I will give you a discrepancy right out of the gate on this. If you go to Parfumo, um, excuse me, excuse me whilst I hydrate. If you go to Parfumo and look at the note listing, they list three types of ouds in this top, middle, and bottom, and that's it. Indian oud, Cambodian oud, and Borneo oud. Okay, that's what Parfumo says. If you go to the actual Arabian oud website, which you would think that's the one to trust, right? Now, to be fair, this is Arabian oud USA, so maybe they, like, you know, uh, put the new uh, intern on the USA website or something. But uh, the top notes is Indian shoyuka oud, which I think that means, like, the highest quality oud uh, is what shoyuk means. I'm not 100% sure, but I think I read that somewhere, that that means a very high quality Indian oud, which it doesn't smell like an Indian oud, though. That's the thing. Has none of the fecal animalic qualities of an Indian oud. Damask, Damascus rose, okay, in the, in the top. The heart is Suf, Sufi Cambodian oud and bergamot. Very strange heart note there, bergamot. Usually that's in the top. And a base of Borneo Supreme Oud and Sandalwood. Now, of those three extra notes that's listed here that's not listed on Parfumo, definitely, hands down, without a question, the Sandalwood is the one that I can see the most. I get almost no rose in this. Almost none. Um, and I'll talk to you a little bit about how the fragrance sort of develops. But um, that note listing is a little bit surprising to me. Because I get a lot of musks. And the oud, and the oud is very woody in this fragrance, okay? So if you like woody style oud compositions, like if you like Creed's Royal Oud, for example, this may be one to check out. It's done in a little different style. Go watch my review on uh, Royal Oud by uh, Arabian Oud, and you'll kind of get a little bit of a feel for the style. They don't smell exactly the same, but the style is very similar. Um, let me read you the blurb, just so you get kind of an idea from the brand. It says... A refined, exquisite, earthy fragrance. I disagree with that. It's definitely not earthy. With an outstanding sillage. Mm. Mukhalat, well, we'll talk about that in a second. Mukhalat Dewan Al Shark opens with a deep, rich, woody scent of oud magnified by the subtle invite of Damascus Rose. This luxury, sorry, this luxurious oud fragrance is comp complemented by the statement. Sweetness of Indian shoyuka oud that develops over time to a dignified sensorial embrace. Settled with the regal scent of Siofi Cambodian oud and Borneo Supreme oud, this distinguished eau de parfum comes to life with the masterful composition of bergamot and sandalwood. Mukhalat Dewan Al Shark revolves, sorry, resolves to a spicy, fresh staple that rests wonderfully on the skin. Okay. So it is slightly spicy as well, woody spicy in the beginning. Um, and another thing that I have to take sort of, I have to dock points on is their use of the word muhalit. Because to me, muhalit is when different pure fragrance oils are blended. Okay, so a muhalit is kind of when you take like pure oud and let's say pure rose oil and blend them together kind of in an, in an atar like fashion, right? This is a Sultan Pasha atar. Um, so imagine taking like pure oud oil and pure rose oil and blending them in something that uses no perfumer's alcohol. That's a mukhalit to me. That's how I see a mukhalit, okay? Um, this, <laughs> do want now, I'll shark, they even say right there, eau de parfum. What are they talking about, mukhalit? They just throw the name out there. It's almost like, 
uh, we'll get those suckers in the West. They'll think, ah, mukhalit. This is like a, this is like some fancy uh, Arabian perfume. It's definitely worth four hundred twenty-five dollars. I'm not a fan of the marketing. Um, I'm not a fan of the scent either, to be honest with you. But um, the whole mukhalit thing is just a little weird. As is the addition of that rose. I don't get any of the properties of the Damascus rose. So, um, but the fragrance smells. Like the opposite of a mukhalit is really the thing that's shocking because a mukhalit is usually extremely uh, intense experience, right? It's like taking those oils and, you know, it's meant to sort of uh, survive the heat of the desert, the anim the camels, the horses that they're around in the desert, right? It's made to survive that extreme environment and pure oil, uh, pure attar, um, you know, it, it lasts on your skin for days sometimes, right? It's really made to, to last. And this doesn't have anywhere near that intensity to me. It's almost the opposite of a, of a, of a big Middle Eastern attar. It's almost the exact opposite. Um, to me, this has very Western touches to my nose. So when I smell this, I get a little bit of amber, and sometimes the amber reminds me a little bit of French-style perfumery. So like, for example, if you know the amber touches in some of these amber fougeres, as I've um, called them, like, uh, for example, Davidoff Zeno, or Eigner's Free Life, right? Or something like Guerlain's Heritage, right? There's something in the, um, there's something in that amber fougere structure that I keep getting whiffs of in Dewan Al Shark. And, and in fact, sometimes, um, Sometimes I swear to God, it smells like there's something lavender in here. Like there's a like there's a lavender note that just sort of skims itself along the surface, plays peekaboo with you. And at least if I can't smell lavender, it feels like I can feel its presence. You know how lavender sometimes uh, you feel it more than you smell it. It just it gives me that aura for some reason. But I could be wrong. This is just me prognosticating on, on a scent that I really don't know very well, except for just the couple wearings that I've given it. So this is really just a late night insight, uh, a quick ramble on a scent that I'll never own. So uh, mostly what I smell is wood and suede. When you, when you really get down to it, the oud here smells woody, suede and musky. And, it, and the musk um, is a very subdued, a very soft, it's not the animalic musk, it's nothing like the real musks of Arise La Dore and stuff like that. You know, it's a very subdued, really in a way I would almost call this a good beginner oud fragrance, if, if that makes sense, if it wasn't for the insane $425 price tag. Um, and, you know, maybe it's the sandalwood note that's sort of adding this extreme uh, smoothness to the composition, and it's also possible that the sandalwood note is what's giving it this sort of designer feel because depending on the type of sandalwood that was used, you know, I could um, I could easily see this sort of um, um, giving that designer-like feel because of the type of, of sandalwood that was used. Um, so, you know, to me, that is maybe where I'm getting this designer, um, this sort of designer... Uh, feel from. And, you know, one thing, I mentioned this rose that's notably absent, this Damask rose. And see, what's interesting is normally um, Damask rose comes off as fruity, uh, sweet, and, you know, slightly, almost like a deep, narcotic, deep rose. You know, usually Damask rose is very evident in a composition. And sometimes it can have a very green tint to it, slightly geranium-like, slightly spicy, but also slightly, if you've heard sort of me talk about the pure rose oils that Russian Adam sent me, they almost smell a bit like artichoke in that it's almost like taking the green aspects of the rose and blending them up, right? And then putting them into an oil. And I don't get any, any of that in, in this at all. Um, you know, for me, it is, it's just a lot of smooth, um, very generic smelling oud, uh, very little character. This, this scent has very little character. This, this would be a good oud to wear to work. Like if you didn't, if you wanted to wear an oud to work, 
but you didn't want to wear something that would offend anyone because it's almost like you're incognito wearing this fragrance, this, this would be something that I would recommend. Um, and so the queen of flowers, the, the rose, the damask rose, completely notably absent to my nose. Um, and other than the few twists I talked about, you know, a little more of the smooth wood coming through here and there, uh, a little more of the suede notes coming through here and there. There is one time when I uh, wore it yesterday, I got a little bit of a, like a petrol note that came through very briefly. It was like very quickly and then I felt like it really disappeared. Um, but don't think Dior's Fahrenheit or anything like that. It's almost like um, a little bit of a violet leaf slash petrol accord and then it was gone. You know, it's a, it's, it's not a dark, animalic, challenging oud by any stretch of the imaginations. Um, you know, it's just a little bit of amber, mostly musk in, in oud to my nose. And that touch of amber, you know, sometimes kind of comes and goes. It blends with the mix. Um, but definitely the musk, I think the musk and the oud are, are the most prominent to me. Um, and, you know, it's funny because there's one... Um, there is one review on Parfumo, and the guy says exactly the opposite of everything that I say. Um, he talks about how amazing it is uh, with the sillage, and how strong it is, and how different it is from everything else, and how um, the ingredients are so well that uh, $425 actually isn't that bad. Um, and so it's, it's just interesting how different noses see different, um, you know, fragrances for me. This is a big time pass. This is, um, you know, uh, this, the reason I gave this three wearings, and if you go watch my review of the $1,500 Royal Oud by Arabian Oud, I said the exact same thing. I, I wore it multiple times back to back to back, hoping maybe I missed something. Like maybe there really is something to this blend. But every time I'm just kind of left going, eh, I think it's just kind of, they're pricing it here, hoping people buy it is my guess. I, I don't think this is worth $425. I don't even think this is worth $100. I paid for, for this. This is, um, this, this is, uh, Ajmal's Mukhalet Al-Sham. Now this smells like a proper oud fragrance. And I think I paid $30 for this. Now, granted, I bought it off of a friend. So I think if you go retail or even at discounters, you're going to have to pay double or triple that. But this is definitely worth 60 or $90, whereas I don't know if this is worth 60 or 90 I don't know if Diwan Al Shark is worth 60 or 90 to me, but um, the Ajmal, Mokhalad Al Shams, absolutely, 100%. I'm, I much prefer this style of oud, and this has many of the um, same notes that you find in some of these Arabian oud fragrances I've been talking about, but they're much, this is the quality of a proper oud fragrance that I would I would recommend, like if you wanted to get a proper, uh, not expensive starter oud where, you know, uh, the oud is, is um, properly executed, this is the one that I would recommend, in, in my personal opinion. So this is just kind of a quick hit video, a late night insight. Um, you know, obviously I think after uh, smelling three and when you take the price value quality ratio I, I just think it's a brand that's not for me i did like blue oud like if you said hey ramsey i'm gonna send you a bottle of arabian oud um which one do you want 100 percent, it would be blue oud that's the one that appeals most to me but um i just think the brand isn't for me when you start talking about the amount of money that they're asking i would much rather just go buy an ariz ladore or ensar or bortnikoff or you know something along those lines much more appeals to me than than this when it comes to the oud game so but i do enjoy doing these videos for you guys because when i um look up videos on youtube i mean there's nothing on this there's some other arabian ouds but i didn't see a single one on duan al shark so kind of a youtube exclusive just me rambling here almost at midnight so um cheers everybody i appreciate you watching do leave a comment let me know what you think if you've experienced this one or let me know what you think of the brand of arabian oud if you agree with me uh, if you think they're a little overpriced and not worth it, or if it's a brand you really love. So have a good evening, everyone. Cheers, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.